Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to go through exactly how you can get started with investing before the new year. I'll take you through step by step how to get started but before that I'll talk through exactly how to know when you're ready to invest because that's a question that you can often ask yourself is, am I actually ready to invest? So I'm going to go through that with you today and then I'll give you a step-by-step -step guide to how to get invested. Step one is to decide, am I ready to invest? The chances are the answer to this is yes, if you are watching this video right now. There is no ideal time to invest, so there's not really much point trying to time the market or wait for the market to go down before you start investing. So actually, there's no better time to get into the market than today. Plus, when you are investing, you're usually planning to invest for the long term. So a few weeks or months here or there won't really matter over the course of 30 or 40 years. So that's also something to think about. That being said, because the money that you're investing should really be money that you don't need access to within the next, say, five years or so, you will want to keep some cash on hand on the side. It's not that you can't take the money out, it's just that you might not want to sell, particularly if the market is down when you need the money. So that's why it's important to make sure you've got some money outside of your investments just as a backup. So some people will call this an emergency fund. I would recommend that you keep an emergency fund on hand. So this can be three to six months of expenses. So your essential expenses that you would need on hand just to have in savings. So you can put this into a savings account. You can put it in a high yield savings account. So get a little bit of interest on that money. But the idea here is that it's very liquid and you can access it whenever you might need to access it. And this would save you dipping into your investments if there was some kind of emergency that came up. Also, if you do have any high interest debt, so you can think about any debt that's about 5% or higher in interest, you should consider and really consider paying that off first before you invest because the interest on the debt would really erode and exceed any potential gains that you might make in the stock market. Thinking about high interest debt, we're not really thinking about a mortgage at quite a low interest rate or a student loan that might have a low interest rate. We're thinking about those high interest forms of debt. So it might be a credit card or a store card. Those are the usual culprits. So I would really recommend focusing on paying that down and off first before you consider investing. If you've got your emergency fund saved up and you haven't got any high interest debt, then I would say that you're ready to invest. So you can get your money into the market and get started with investing today because there really is no better time. Now that you've decided that you're ready to invest, how do you do it? Well, step number two is to open an account. So you need to open an account on an investment platform. You can open an account with Hargreaves Lansdowne, with Fidelity, with Vanguard. Once you've gone onto that platform to open your account, you should have the option to open a Stocks and Shares ISA if you're in the UK or a Roth IRA if you're in the US. So if you don't already have one of those accounts, then you should open that now. These accounts are tax efficient, which means that you won't pay tax on any gains that you make within the account or when you withdraw the money. And this is because you've already paid tax on the income before you put it into the account. Therefore, they're a great account for beginners and even seasoned investors because you can actually invest up to £20,000 in your stocks and shares ISA per year 
and you can invest up to $6,000 in your Roth IRA per year. So that's the cap on your investment amount per year in these accounts, but you could always open an extra account if you want to invest above that limit. You could open this additional investment account with the same investment platform that you've got your stocks and shares ISA or your Roth IRA with, but this is a great account to get you started. I won't go into too much detail about the investment platforms themselves in this video, but you can check them out for yourselves and you can also check out my other videos for more information on the platforms. I would suggest that you look out for what they offer in terms of fund statistics, their customer service, their website, their app, check out what funds you can actually invest in with them, things like that. So that can give you an idea. Another very important thing to look out for is their charges. So an investment platform will charge you in addition to any fund charges that you will pay to the fund managers when you invest in a fund. They will also charge you an overall charge for investing with them. So this can be as a proportion or proportional to the amount that you have invested with them, or it might be a flat rate. So it might be a yearly rate that they charge you. So have a look at that because that's a very important thing to keep in mind when you're choosing an investment platform. A great tip is actually to check out Hargreaves Lansdowne's website because you don't actually have to have an account with them to check out the information that they have on there. And they do have quite a lot of information. They have a lot of fund statistics. They have some fund shortlists. They have some recommendations. They've got a, an actual wealth of information on there and it's all free and you don't need to have an account with them to check it out. But I do a lot of my research on there so I really would recommend that. Some platforms are a bit more basic, they might not be as user friendly, but they definitely still give you access to the funds that you want to invest in. So you could consider those because they probably have lower charges. As a beginner, you might want to start off with something that has, you know, all the bells and whistles that you need. And then you can always transition to something with a lower charge, perhaps in the future when you've got a bit more in your investment account. Because if you are with an investment platform that charges you as a percentage of what you have invested, then you will notice that as your investments increase, so will your charge. So if that's something that you notice as you're investing over the years, then you can always consider switching to a different platform. This is because of what I was saying earlier. So actually it can be something to think about that perhaps you choose an investment platform with a flat fee for a year um, because actually this might work out cheaper for you than when your investments start to go up and then your proportionate charge goes up if you actually choose an investment platform with a charge that works that way. So that's just something to consider when you're looking into these investment platforms. Some platforms might charge you every time you place a deal too. So that's just something to watch out for because if you're investing on a monthly basis, if you're paying into a fund on a monthly basis, you don't really want to be charged every time you place a deal. Step number three is to put some money into your account. So you've set up your account, you've got your ISA or your IRA ready to go, but now you need to put some money in. So it's completely up to you how much money you put in to get started. What I did was I put in a lump sum to get me started and then I actually set up monthly investments so that I could save by direct debit every month. You can decide if that's right for you or you might prefer to invest monthly, weekly or daily. So you can actually decide whether you actually want to invest weekly perhaps or even daily. It's up to you. You might just want to put a lump sum in and then just leave that to do the work and that's fine too. Whatever you choose is great but it's just to note that you can actually set up a monthly direct debit to go out of your account and into your investments of your choice. That way you can dollar cost average into the market over time. 
you can deposit a lump sum and put that money to work now and then you can think about investing monthly, weekly or even daily. So all you have to do in this step is deposit some money and link your bank account so you're ready to go. Step number four then is to buy some investments. So this is where the fun starts and you can finally choose your investments and get your money in the market. So once you have the money in your account, you need to choose your investments. Depending on which investment platform you've chosen, you might actually have the opportunity to fill out a questionnaire, which is kind of like a robo advisor element. And here you can actually choose your risk tolerance. You can choose the type of investments you would like to make and it will come out with some funds that it recommends that you invest in. I went through that quiz when I first opened my investment account. So you can go through that and it will get you a bit familiar with types of funds and get you thinking about what you're really looking for. I would say that the funds that I was recommended were actively managed and they did have high charges. So that's just something to watch out for. You can't really go wrong with index funds. So check what index funds are available on your platform. Have a read into it. Make sure you really know what you're investing in. But I would recommend getting started with index funds. These funds track an index, so they're not actively managed and the charges will be low. There are many, many index funds out there that track lots of different indexes, but you could look into a global stock market index or an S&P 500 index fund. So have a look around. If you go with an S&P 500 index fund, you can be safe in the knowledge that the S&P 500 has returned an average annual return of 11% since its inception. So do some research, choose your index funds and you should be good to go. Step number five is to rinse and repeat. So all you need to do here is repeat steps three and four. Put some more money into your account and invest some more. Now that you've got started, you just need to keep doing it. So you can carry on with your monthly, weekly or daily investments, whatever you've chosen, if you're able to do that. If you're not, then you can always take a break and come back and invest some more in a lump sum, perhaps a few months in the future. Whatever you choose to do, it's important just to keep doing it now. So now that you've started, don't stop. It's great if you can give yourself a goal, perhaps a monthly goal, whether it's £20 or £1,000 or something in between. Whatever you choose will be great because you'll be working towards your investment goals. Now that your money is in the market, it will start to work for you and you can just keep contributing and watching your investments grow and grow. So that's it. Those are all the steps that you need to follow to get investing before the end of the year. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment to let me know how you get on and give the video a like if you made it this far. Thank you for watching and see you next time.